Hi and welcome to another tutorial for FM Tutorials. My name is David and today I'm going to give a very quick lesson on how to use FileMaker Pro. Uh, this is sort of a general run of uh, the use of the program specifically for uh, FileMaker 16 which is the latest current version and uh, just to give a basic overview of the features and how a database works. So I have FileMaker Pro Advanced open and I went to File New Solution and I'm presented with a dialog which allows me to create a, a file and specify the name. So I'm going to call this Sample Database and when we start off uh, our file is essentially empty and FileMaker goes ahead and creates a table which is empty, but we're going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to check this box to remove all occurrences and I'll explain what that means a little bit later. Now to get a better understanding of FileMaker Pro and what it's capable of doing, we're going to use a program and that is Excel. Any spreadsheet program would do actually. But basically what we want to look at is how Excel can be used as an analogy for what a database is doing. Okay, so it, you'll notice at the bottom of your Excel file down here that you have what are called spreadsheets. And each of those spreadsheets could also be called tables. All right, so for example, we have a spreadsheet for our contacts, a spreadsheet for our orders and a spreadsheet for products that we offer. Now in the same way, if we go back to FileMaker, we can create three tables, one called Contacts, another one called Orders, and another one called Products. So our database is like an Excel file, and each table is kind of like a spreadsheet. And on our Contact spreadsheet, we have various fields first name last name date of birth and let's say phone number and in our orders table we have the order date the order amount and the total items in that order and we want to know which contact placed the order or which customer and in our products table, we're going to have a column which says the product ID, the description, and the price. Now let's do the same in FileMaker. So I'm going to double click my contacts table. And notice we have no fields, and we're going to start creating them. So the first field we're actually going to create is contact ID. And down here, we're going to specify a number field. And then we click Create. And then First Name. And let's make this a text field. And click Create. Last Name. And then we want to choose Date of Birth. And this is going to be a Date field. And uh, by selecting the field types, you're going to be able to use different calculations which are going to help make things a lot easier in terms of uh, data retrieval and data entry and so forth. All right, and now let's go to our orders table. And of course, we're going to have to have an order ID, and that'll be a number field. And then we want to have the order date and the order amount. And this is going to be a number field. And then uh, the contact that placed the order. Okay. And finally, we go to our products table. And we're going to create a product ID field or column, followed by the description of the product. And this is a text field. And then we want to create a price field. And now the next thing we want to do is create a unique ID for each record in this table. 
So for example, we specified a contact ID, but we don't want to have to insert manually that contact ID every single time. It would be much nicer if the computer automatically generated a serial number for this contact ID as we entered them. So we're going to choose serial number and we're going to start with the number one and it's going to increment by one value every time we create a new record. All right, so let's click OK and we're going to do the same thing for our orders table and our products product ID field. At this point all you have to do is click OK and we are ready to create our layouts. So you can clearly see how in certain respects FileMaker is similar to Excel but now we're going to get to the functionality which is far superior in a database program and we're going to cover that in our next tutorial.